I am Diane Benz and I am uh, one of the commissioners on the St. Paul Civilian Review Commission. I am also the third vice president for the St. Paul NAACP. I'm the first vice president for the African American Leadership Council and I'm a 40 year activist for St. Paul. Go ahead with your testimony. And I have concerns and what I wanted to do for myself uh, today since for the sake of time is talk about certain pieces of the bill. And I have to say, uh, Madam Chair, uh, the Scott bill is, the, is not the dream bill that I would like, but it's the best bill I've seen so far. And what I would like to say and talk about is um, officers uh, choosing when to limit the use of, of their uh, body cam. Uh, I don't think that that should be um, something that should happen for individual police officers because we have seen in the past when we have laws that uh, allow discretion like the uh, discretion and I'll give you an example one because I've received so many complaints for disorderly conduct and for obstruction of the legal process and everybody can determine officers determine that different officers do different things so what we had to do is go to the city council and uh, I mean, go to the city attorney's office and ask them say would y'all please because it was having such an effect on our community with folks getting charged with those two charges that uh, then and poor folks just couldn't afford that so I say you can't allow and that's an experience we had we've been had we had that experience about 10 years before and now it doesn't seem to be a problem because the city attorney wasn't char is not charging those charges but they're still on the book and we just had one that came for the civilian um, review commission and where we decided that the officer didn't make a mistake the policy did I mean the policy was vague so what I'm saying is I believe that there should be concrete policies that define when those cameras go, go on and what kind of uh, situations they go on in and what we were looking at is that any encounter, any encounter with uh, police that may become confrontational, uh, enforcement, arrests, stops and frisses uh, because we know that out of those usually out of those times of uh, encounters, we have uh, other things that can happen. The situation gets out of hand. Uh, there have been those kind of traffic, uh, traffic stops where several African Americans have been getting killed all over the country. And just stops in general, even here in St. Paul and Minneapolis, where there have been deaths as a result of that. And, uh, and how these uh, play out has been kind of vague because we didn't have video equipment, we didn't have video camera, we didn't have body cams, none of those kind of things. So what we have is a community with a lot of suspicion about what happened here. We don't know. So, uh, you know, so we have, we, we kind of like fill in the dots for ourselves, for our brain. And there are those of us in the community who believe that when we encounter law enforcement and it gets to be adversarially, there is three steps that are taken. One is that there's that stop that happens, which for all of us is uh, en enforcement because that officer is authority and has power. Then there's number two, if you're lucky, you get some verbal prompts. And then there's number three, you can end up uh, in some kind of situation where you may be dead. That is the reality that we have been facing. So that's not what we call a continuance of uh, force. It just jumped from two to, two to, two to death. And, and so we can't continue to have those. So that's why we wanted the uh, body cams for transparency and also for accountability. And we know that statistics tells us that uh, when you have the body cams in places where they have them, 80% of the complaints against police go down. 60% of the conduct of folks who are encountered by the police or get into a conversation with the police has been has went down by 60%. So those are some things that we need to look at. So that was one of the concerns that I had. And then we talked about when to, we, we're concerned about uh, when these videos should be flagged. Um, and who's doing the flagging? I think, in my opinion, too much is left up for police to do. Police can't police police. Uh, and then we say it's transparency. It, it ain't happening in my community. You can't police yourself. So there needs to be uh, some type of, and, 
And I, I'm ready not say that because, um, God, I worked for the government for 35 years, and I worked for the government. I was a government employee, even though I was a parole officer, and even though I worked in the jail. But we can't, you cannot have police, police, and police. There need to be some mechanism in place <clears throat> where if you're going to redact information or whatever's going to happen, somebody else needs to be doing that. Somebody, some other person other than that police officer other than that supervisor. And I'm not saying that it's not, that they wouldn't do a good job. I'm just saying it don't look transparent. And when we talk about transparency, I think that that's very important. Um, I did like your piece in your bill where you, uh, I thought it was a caveat. I would like to have the green piece that says that police officers don't review none of the video until after they write their report. Because I do agree as before, and I'm, I'm, I'm not going to repeat what was said earlier, but uh, that uh, there are two, those are two, uh, two separate pieces of the investigation. That police perception, what he saw, what he thought, and then that video camera, what we see that actually happened. And, it does, it, it, and I think in all cases, it's all right if you don't remember everything. I, I wrote, as a parole officer, I wrote, wrote reports for, for 25 years, and there were times when I had to go back and add to that report because there was something that I didn't remember, or it was something that I didn't include. So, because we're all human, but I don't think it's right for you to have the same. Well, if we're going to do this, let's be fair on both sides. Let's take this pancake we're baking here. We're going to give the police the opportunity to look at this video. Well, give the criminal an opportunity to look at the video, too. Let them see it so they know how to get their story together. That don't happen. So why are we giving these law enforcement officers this tool? I don't think it should be a one-up a, a, a one on policing in my community. No time. Now, I'm going to stop because you have other folks here. Who's up next?